Well, I've been fishing for 55 years now and I've done various types of fishing. But one fire type of fishing that I've never tried until this year, 2018, is fly fishing. So I've taken up saltwater fly fishing and I'm just heading to a mark to have some fun and see if I can catch a bass on the fly. The fly rod I've got is a nine foot, nine weight rod. It's not an expensive rod. It came as part of a kit, a starter kit, where you get the rod, you get the reel, you get the line, you, you get a few flies and some sunglasses. I really didn't want to spend too much money just starting out in saltwater fly fishing, just in case I didn't take to it. So we got a nine weight, and in actual fact it says on it, it says eight stroke nine weight, so oh, we'll call it eight and a half weight rod and then the line is nine weight line weight forward line it's floating line now most of the areas that i would do fly fishing particularly for bass would be in very shallow water therefore floating line is is absolutely ideal and then to the end of the fly line i tied a perfection loop to make it easy for, more, for me to change the leader and that goes through the the rod rings with no problems at all and then the leader itself is nine foot it's a tapered leader it's a diy tapered leader i'm experimenting at the moment with making my own tapered leaders basically to cut down on the cost um, my only reservations would be i haven't had a problem so far when i've been trying this that because it's sections joined by knots uh, whether the knots will start picking up little bits of loose weed if there's loose weed in the water but it's all an experimental stage at the moment and if if I find that these DIY tapered leaders don't work then I'll either buy knotless tapered leaders or I'll do away with the tapered leader and just just fit a normal non tapered leader just the same as I would do for normal lure fishing so the sections are, I've got four foot of 40 pound amnesia, clear amnesia. And the second section is three foot of 20 pound amnesia, joined by a surgeon's knot. And then the final section is two foot of 15 pound fluorocarbon. And that's joined by a loop to loop connection. And again, these are perfection loops to make it easy for me to change the tippet end of the leader when I when I need to. Now one deadly way to target bass is with live shrimp or live prawn. It really is a deadly me method. Fished on a bubble float, particularly using the bubble float when you're fishing in shallow water or a sliding float in deeper water absolutely deadly method if there's any if there's any bass around and you're fishing live prawn live shrimp i would say you're almost guaranteed to to pick up a bass it might not be a big bass but you're guaranteed to pick one up so this is one of the reasons for this session that i'm i've chosen to use imitation shrimp flies got four there and the other reason is that the the mark that i'm fishing is full of weed and it's full of shrimps and it would be definitely be on the menu for the bass when they come into this mark. And if I came down here with a push net and um, pushed the push net through through some of this rackweed that's here, uh, again, I'm almost guaranteed to, to pick up some shrimps and prawns. So the four shrimps, I think I can remember the names for those interested. This is a, a Cuban shrimp. This is, I think it's called a, a fizzle, a fizzle shrimp olive. This one is, is a, a sand prawn, and this one is called a, a Homer Shrimpton. Now, I've tried in all of these shrimps imitations, I've chosen them where they've got uh, little eyes at the back there. The idea being that when a, a shrimp prawn is trying to escape its prey, it will swim, it will propel itself backwards, and it will swim back that way, and therefore. That's where the position of the eyes will be. Um, so all of these have got, some of them have got eyes both end, like that, that, it's got eyes there, and it's got eyes at the front there. But again, that one, when you're drawing that through, uh, and it, it, to imita it's imitating a, uh, a fleeing 
prawn swimming backwards you you've got the eyes there but I, I have to say you can get some you can get some really good prawn imitation uh, hard lures for bass fishing for normal lure bass fishing but I have to say these these fly imitation shrimps are to me they look absolutely absolutely brilliant so fingers crossed my theory will be right and uh, at least one bass will go for these right I'm ready to go I'm going to start with this this fly here the Cuban shrimp we'll start with that one I've deliberately picked a fairly sheltered area for this for obvious reasons that it's going to be easier for me to cast although I have got I have got a bit of a bit of a breeze and an onshore breeze here but um, I'm going to wade out here I've got the waders on I'm going to wade out it's very 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 shallow and wade out and try and get myself into a position um, where it's fairly easy for me to cast but when it comes to casting distance particularly if I, I wade out in fact I've got to wade out here because it would be impossible for me to fish from here because I've got all this weed that we talked about earlier all that that uh, uh, rack weed showing on the surface there which of course will get covered later when the tide floods in and but then that's that this is where all these these shrimps and prawns will will hide out so at the moment we're about we're about three quarters of an hour before low water so fish fish down to low water and then fish a few hours of the flooding tide and when the tide starts flooding at this mark I've, I've, I've got a spring tide today there'll there'll be quite a bit of current running which of course of course the bass love You can see here one of the slight problems with it, with this mark is this this weed that's sitting on the surface at the moment when the water's really low. This is uh, the, the spaghetti weed, and uh, it's a it's a it's a blooming nuisance when you're when you're lure, nor, even normal lure fishing when you've got you got this weed. I say get a bit of depth and uh, all that that gets covered. What I'm going to do is retrieve this line with little with strips like that to try and imitate a fleeing shrimp sort of darting darting swimming backwards like that. What I've done here, uh, because this side wind is, is a bit annoying, I've waded upwind uh, a fair bit. So I've, I've now got the wind behind me, and I'm I'm a, a decent amount away from the shore. Um, so this this is this should be a quite good quite a good position because I've got uh, lots of weed a weed line to the to the right of me, and yeah now I've got now I've got the wind helping me rather than uh, rather than making it a little bit. Uh, awkward casting so I've got absolutely loads loads of room now well the tide has turned now uh, it's flooding in and this is when I hope in the next two or three hours when the tide starts flooding in and the current builds up and we we might pick some up something up I have to say I've got great admiration now now I've been uh, trying this for saltwater fly anglers or fly fishers as they're known who can regularly catch a mix of species of fish um, on, a, on a fly rod um, yeah I can understand yeah standing uh, going to a pond or a lake for trout or on a river where you've only got a you know flick flick it out uh, just get the fly out and car casting distance is not an issue really not that I've ever done it and know what I'm talking about but it's got to be easier than this uh, where you've got I mean 
Well, I think you, you know you've got an ordinary lure rod and you've got a plug or a soft plastic that got some got some weight and it's absolutely no problem you can you can flick that out up to say say 70 70 80 yards depending on the lure and here you know and even into when you have having to deal with side winds and and into the wind but this is this is not easy you've got to have those fish fish fairly close to you but fortunately with bass I'm wading in like this so I've waded in if I was fishing on the shoreline I'm already in, in a position where I'm say 40 50 yards out from dry land so that ob that obviously helps but um, if I was doing it from the shoreline there I would have Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to get the fly beyond beyond all this weed sitting on the on the surface there. Now, but there's no way, and it'd just be impossible. Yeah, let us say later, when there's a bit more depth, that weed will get covered, and it, it won't be an issue. But when you're when you've got things like that in front of you, rack weed or spaghetti weed sitting on the surface, um, it makes life very very difficult with this fishing. I moved, I moved to this spot, uh, one of the reasons is that I'm finding it easier to cast here. I was finding it, it was a bit too breezy, getting a bit too breezy where I, where I was before. And uh, I've got this little, st still a breeze, but a little, little sheltered spot here. And it's, it's quite good because I've got this weed here and I can fish just beyond this weed. And it seems like there's a little bit of a, a, a deep gully here as well slightly uh, deeper water well as you can see I'm in I, I've, I've had a move to a to a different spot I was having no luck at the other spot and moved to this spot and I've I changed the fly and I've got a little bass which I'm very pleased to say this is on the Homer Shrimpton. Wow. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. That is my very, very first bass on the fly. I, I don't care that it's only a very small bass. It's my first bass fly fishing. I'm absolutely thrilled because this fly, this sort of fly fishing is, is not easy. Right. And off it goes. Well, I'm slowly getting cut off now, so I've got to call it a day and head home. So really thrilled to to catch a bass on the fly, my very first bass on a fly, even if it was only a small one. I must admit, during the sec the session, at times, particularly when it was breezy and not so easy to cast, I, I was wishing that I had a a conventional lure rod with me and some and some lures. But when I actually hooked the bass I uh, thought well how, how what a fantastic thrill it was and and it must be absolutely brilliant to catch uh, a good sized bass on a fly rod well in the end I tried all the the shrimp flies and it was this one here that caught the bass the Homer Shrimpton but I'm sure uh, any of the other flies if I'd been using it at that spot at that time we might have caught that caught the little bass as, as well so really enjoyable, not easy, this saltwater fly fishing. Um, got a lot of admiration for the people, the experienced saltwater fly fishermen um, that can regularly catch fish in, in different conditions um, because it, it's not easy. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.